Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my babies. How are you? Golly gee. I'm feeling pretty good. I just finished my tour of duty and it's 3 p.m. That's great, just getting off in the afternoon, having had to go in early. And tomorrow I go in even a little earlier than that. Can you hold on a minute? Thanks. Thanks. I went and just put on a light. Light is good. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Young people, old folks, whoever's uh, tuning me in. I hope you had a blessed day today. I hope you started the day off with prayer. I hope you had a good evening and that you were safely on your way home or just going into the afternoon safely. God is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And that's what Just In Case is about. I just want you to be blessed like I am. I'm blessed. I am so blessed. So blessed. So kept. So strengthened. He answers prayer. We had a great um uh, Bible, noonday Bible study with uh, um, Elder Bramlett at Olivet, 12 noon. And she once again reiterated praying, praying, the necessity of it, um, how to be blessed in it and know that your prayers are going to be answered. She told us how not to pray and just reminding us because we're grown folks. We've been praying a long time, but sometimes we forget. And you can always use uh, improvement when it comes to prayer. Okay? Always use improvement. I know I can. And uh, it was a blessed lesson, a blessed lesson. And, and there's promises that the Lord wants us to remember when we pray, okay? Um, he will grant you your petitions when they're in his will. And when uh, you ask them, uh, as long as you are praying in God's will, Today is Thursday. It's August 8th. It's three minutes after three. And uh, I said I would come home and do this because I was running late this morning. I woke up with a toothache. Could you imagine? Yeah, it's that tooth that has to be removed next week. Mother Gale. Mother Gale is something else. Did I tell you? I told you in the last one. I told you I tried to get it pulled out for free. Because my friend, uh, this, this, this friend told me, you ain't going across the street. I call him Mr. Beezlebub. And if I call somebody Mr. Beezlebub, it's because they remind you of Lord of the Flies. Yeah. He said, go on over there and get it done for free. And, and me, with my smart self, listened to him. So I drove uh, a little car around the corner, took my teeth out, and uh, took my bra off. And I was, uh, I looked just like I was homeless. Mm-hmm. Trying to get something for free. Saint to God now. Lost her mind. <laughs> Completely. I'm going to get this done for free because I found out this took cost me $200 to get it pulled. I went around, yeah, I he encouraged me. And I went on and they said, yeah, fill this out and come back in. Have you been here before? I said, no. 
I just have a toothache. I'd never been here before, and I had never been in the apartment of him. So uh, I looked at that form, and I mowed over it and hemmed over it and saw the questions until it got to that question. Your social security number, your household income. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I, I still wanted to get it free. And I worked with that thing in my mind. I said, ah, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back in there uh, looking like a bum, take my teeth out and let them work on this mouth. I'm going to put this on the paper, that on. But the Lord wouldn't let it rest with me. It wouldn't rest in my soul and my spirit just wouldn't rest. And then the Holy Spirit says, now what kind of witness are you to Mr. Beezlebun? Uh-huh. And you know you've been asking that, telling that man, ask him, come on to all of it. Come on to all of it. What kind of witness are you and you gonna go and do that? I mean, the Holy Spirit beat me down, beat me down until I finally, me and the Lord, we talking, huh? I read the word about how I was a king and I was a priest and I was a holy nation and I was peculiar people and I was blessed and I heard all this good word. And I finally said, no, 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 I can't do it. If God doesn't make a way, then there's no way to be made. I've been blessed, y'all. I've been best blessed with health with my life and strength. I've worked all my life. I still work. A husband works. And I am born again. Holy Ghost filled. I'm a Christian. Not perfect. But I'm claiming something. I'm claiming salvation. I'm claiming, oh, purification, sanctification. I'm claiming to be holy. And I've got to let my light shine so that others can see his good works and glorify God that is in heaven. See, there was a time I was homeless. There was a time I was toothless. There was a time I had no job. Yeah, just like them out there. Uh, I, I didn't have a God in my life. At least I had no knowledge of him. Mentally, I was dead in trespasses and sins. But now, hallelujah, he brought me out of the miry clay. He placed my feet on a rock to step. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praises. Hallelujah. And whenever we deviate from what the Lord would have us to do, we're going to have a, a conscience that bothers us, a spirit that doesn't sit well. And that's why I thank God. Because, I, you know, I flip out too. Yeah! I want something free. But uh, mm -mm. if it means that I have to let my let my Lord down, if it means that I have to bring him to a low, lower level and not glorify him in my life, then I can't do it. So I decided... I'm going to take this little lousy tooth and, and, and put that money on that table the best I can and, and pray for God's mercy. If it uh, doesn't call for surgical measures, it will be cheaper. If not, I'll just have to pay it and be thankful to God. Because the Lord is my shepherd. And I love being his chosen. I want to bear fruit. 
Anyway, let's pray and then we'll get into today's uh, uh, writing in her journal, her 365 day journal. Who is that? I'm talking about Sarah Young. She wrote a 365 day, uh, 65 day devotional. And she writes in her journal about um, about deep, calling into deep. That's awesome. I like deep things. <sighs> Come on, let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for being our king. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for living inside of us. We thank you for what you did on Calvary. We thank you for this day. We thank you for getting us home safely through the traffic, through the streets. We thank you for blessing our children. Thank you, Father God, for our siblings, our sisters and brothers. Thank you, Lord, for the saints of God, our pastors, their wives and family. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for still being on this earth. Thank you for such a sunny summer, hot summer. We love you, Lord. We ask you, please guide us and lead us. Hide us behind the cross. Help us to encourage someone else through these passages of Scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Sarah writes, I speak to you from the deepest heaven. From deepest heaven. She means inside heaven. You hear me in the depths of your being. Deep calls unto deep. You are blessed to hear me so directly. Never take the privilege for granted. The best response is a heart overflowing with gratitude. I'm training you to cultivate a thankful mind set. This is like building your house on a firm rock where life's storms cannot shake you. As you learn these lessons, you are to teach them to others. I will open up the way before you one step at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young people, old people, God speaks to us from the depths of heaven, she said but he speaks to us in our hearts and in our minds and our very souls. He speaks to us, but we have to avail ourselves to listen. And it takes practice. Once you start to hear his voice and start to become obedient to his voice, a calling, it, it gets a little bit easier, a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit as the years pass. You hear him call you and tell you this and that and the other. And sometimes you ignore when you first start out hearing him. And you ignore it and and he, that doesn't mean that he stops because we asked him lord i want to be closer to you i want to talk to you i want to fellowship with you i love you you love me you read his word and and you hear him throughout the day telling you what to do where to go which way and the more you listen and obey and you become attuned to hearing him. Like what I was just telling you about that dental work done at the free clinic. Oh, gee whiz. Me was speaking real loud. But in the quiet and privacy of my home and, you know, in the night hours and while you're trying to get some sleep, your conscience is bothering you, and telling you, you know, you're not a supplanter anymore. You're not that same old Gail, that trickster. Just like 
Jacob. You know, you're holy, you're sanctified, you're purified, you're pulled out. You know, we aren't to do everything and anything. We are to let our light shine. So Sarah says, he speaks to us, and he does. He speaks to us. There was a time when he used to speak to me, and I, I was, you know, really stubborn. There was more of me to, to rebel with than there is now. You know, I'm younger, and, well, you know. But you get older, and, and you, hey, through many dangerous toils and snares you all have already come, that type of thing. Well, you also learn, I don't like wrestling with the Lord. You know, I don't like the wrestling. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. I don't like it because he's like endless. He has a zillion reasons why you shouldn't do this and that and the other. The whole Bible's full of things that you should do and what you shouldn't do. And you just want to be blessed. You want a, a, your conscious right toward God. You want peace. I like peace. How about you? I love peace. So you do what's right and deep calls unto deep and you hear him. Don't, um, don't hear him and not respond. Be thankful that he is responding to you and that you do have a conscience that can um, that can hear him. He wants us to to be thankful. Um, there was a, an incident the other day I was driving down um, was it 75? Yeah, 75 in the afternoon. A lady, everybody's trying to get home on 75. Everybody. One thing on their mind, H-O-M-E, or the hole in the rock from whence you came out of in the morning. Whatever it looked like, you want to get there. And you got these cars, these thousand pound cars. Some are high, some are low, and in every car there is a blind spot. And apparently I was in somebody's blind spot. And this lady just pulled right into my lane. You know, I heard Pastor say something yesterday uh, on the air about staying in their lane, staying. I resented that. I always, I always tell, like men tell women, stay in your lane, stay in your lane. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like the fact that she had taken over my spot and she almost hit me. And I swerved like that and I was going too fast. And that's another thing I had to come to the Lord about. Lord. Obedience means also obedience to the laws of the land. You know, speeding. I'm one for 80 miles an hour trying to get here and there. So that's why one of the reasons why this morning I did not um, speak. I'm waiting till I wait till I got home. I wanted to be on time, and I would. Um, I said I would come in and talk. I must be obedient, and the Lord lets us see things. You know, He lets us see little issues and places where you're missing the mark sister i'm telling you i'm talking to you like he spoke to me yesterday about that lady in my lane if i i'm 80 miles an hour and i'm doing like that you can hurt somebody never mind her hurting me but i could have uh i could have who knows flipped you know you're going 80 miles an hour gail and I don't think I was supposed to be going that fast. I haven't seen any expressways around here that do 80. Not yet. 70, yeah, but not 80. So that was something to be checking out. You know, chill out, Gail. Chill out. You know, obey. That goes to for you, the laws of land. Yeah, you're not on the cover of um, who's who in crime. But are we as Christians really obeying the laws of the land? speeding and, and uh, you know just just making turns where we shouldn't or running red lights mm. Mm. 
you know, we don't want to, we don't want to bring, you know, shame to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So when he says to obey the, the, um, those in authority over us, the laws of the land, obey them, you know, cell phone talking and, you know, texting and stuff like that, especially in these cars. I came home and um, I was shook by that. I really was because I could have hurt her. She could have hurt me and hurt others because when you somebody goes in your lane that makes you go in somebody else's lane thank god the the people they were they were quite a few a distance behind us but um i was angry at her i was angry and i had to check myself i said uh lord i didn't curse though <gasps> i didn't curse but i was lady i was kind of angry at her and I said, you crazy lady, you know, and she, she did, she looked oblivious, you know, but hey, bless her heart, we didn't hit, and I went on faster to her than her and went on and sped up. I saw a, um, uh, you know, 18-wheeler full of cars in front, and I said, Jesus, I bet you won't get in his lane and do that. Okay, but uh, I was a little pissed. God is training us to cultivate a thankful mindset. You know, being thankful. Thank, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that we didn't have accidents. Thank you that you brought us home. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we're safe and that we're blessed and that we made it through the day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you, Lord, for the people that we, we saw and spoke to today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Because um, I'm sure with everyone, you know, people say things and act, have attitudes that, you know, you look at them and because and, the answers are pert or they're miserable. And that spirit will hop on you. And you too will become miserable. Okay, you will. Misery loveth company, and I don't know if that's a scripture, but misery likes company. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit today because I was able also to ask the Lord. And when I asked him inside, I said, Lord, you know, she, she could be, I said to myself, oh, she could be thankful. You know, she could be, you know, she didn't have to say that like that, you know. This is what I'm saying within myself. But then again, I said, Lord, help me watch what I say. Help me to watch what I say. So, uh, and the Lord brought me through successfully. And I had peace and there was no confusion because of someone else's attitude. She says, this is like building your house on a firm rock. Being thankful is like building your house on a firm rock. And I'm thankful. Be thankful, young people. Be thankful. Be thankful of little things. Be thankful for everything. Be thankful. Just think about it and be thankful. Mamas and daddies, husbands and wives, think about things to be thankful for. You know, sure, he leaves the toilet seat up sometimes. But be thankful that everything, you know, that it could be worse. There could be other problems. You know, sure, this one uh, forgets to, um, to act, you know, nice toward you, blah, blah, blah. Or forgets to speak, you know. Maybe, you know, just be thankful. Be thankful. An attitude of gratitude. And if we do that, um, we'll teach them to others. I'm praying and hoping that I'm making a difference in my client's life. I really am. I want to make a difference. And uh, I don't want to leave anyone because I know I won't always be with the same person, but I won't 
I know that I want to leave her. When I leave, to her, I want her to be better off than when I came. That's my signature. Leave you better off than when I came here. So, Psalms 42, and it's worth reading. That's the one that says the, the deer panted, panting after the water brook. I'm panting after the water brook. I'm looking for water. Looking for the Holy Spirit's direction and calling. Ah, it's a dry and thirsty land where you're looking for Jesus every day. Looking for his blessings. Looking to be a blessing. Listen to this scripture. I love this. One time the Lord spoke this into my hearing while I was doing something just oblivious to everything. And deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Deep calleth unto deep. Holy Spirit. God will talk to that spirit man within you. The Lord talks. You ever hear your pastor get up there and tell you business? That's the Lord talking to him. <laughs> Golly gee, happens quite often. <laughs> okay, deep calls unto deep. Ooh, thank you, Jesus, that, that we're open and bare. Nothing is, is hid from him. Thank you. Because if it was, Lord, I'd, I'd make some big mistakes and, 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 and you wouldn't know to help me. So I'm glad I'm, 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 I am uh, transparent. You can see. Nobody else can see, but you can, the Lord can see what's inside. Come, let us sing for joy. Psalms 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. That's what we do when we go to church on Sundays. When we do it, you know, I do it here too. I praise him. Thank you. Sing. Mm-hmm. I'm Hilda Jackson in the shower. If I want to be, read the Franklin to everybody else. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of my salvation. That's what I come to church, get a chance to get in that house of prayer. I don't know how many more times I'll be able to get in there. And my days aren't, aren't uh, uh, stamped, you know, forever. You know, I'll live here forever. When I get into the house of prayer, mm, I ain't studying nobody. Seriously. I'm sorry. I come to praise, to offer my praise, to offer my thanksgiving, and to receive of the Lord. If I give, he gives back. Praises go up, blessings come down, and they do. They do. Okay, we're going to sing uh, songs, and we're going to praise him. We come before him with thanksgiving, thankful, thankful, thankful. That, that we're able to even clap our hands, we're able to shout for joy, we're able to, to realize that now we have a God in our lives. We're able, thankful, hallelujah, thankful that God called us for a purpose, thankful. Okay, and then uh, Matthew 7, 24 to 25, this is the one that um, says in this chapter, it says about, you know, that beam that's in your eye that you can't see, but yet we can see the beam in other people's eyes. You know, I can't see my issues, but I sure can see yellow. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Sometimes I forget. I have issues. Yes, he's not finished with me yet. Maybe he's finished with you. Hmm? If so, you better get your, uh, what does it say? Get your papers, get your things in order, your business straight. Because you're out of here. He's not, if you're still here and you're listening to me, he's not finished with you yet. Listen to this, Matthew 7, 24 and 25. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams arose, the winds blew, the wind beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Thank you, Jesus. My foundation is on the rock. On the rock. I like that. Where Christ is solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Wow. And that's something. Sand will sink you too. Let a wave come. Let some trouble come and see what happens. It will knock you down. 
knock the wind out of you. Mm -mm -mm. I'd rather be on solid ground so that when trouble comes, I can be just steadfast, immovable, and abounding in the work of the Lord. That's what I can do. I can hold on. I, I can stand the test of time because I'm on the rock, the solid rock. I love you, saints of God. It's now 3.33. It's Thursday, 8 o'clock. Uh, it's August 8, 2019. Autumn will be here soon. I looked at the calendar. Autumn is later on in the month, and Rosh Hashanah is behind that. And Labor Day. Mm. Over there in the corner, in that corner, near my prayer chair, right over there, I'm making some curtains, some nice drapery for these windows. And, uh, I might start them today. I might start them today. I have an afternoon off. I got to work tomorrow, but God is good, and that's okay. It's okay. I love you. God bless you. Give thanks today. Be thankful. 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 It could always be worse, you know? You could be homeless. You could be a paralytic. You could be febrile in a hospital. You could have had a stroke last night or had seizures. You could have fallen or had a car accident. You could have had a heart attack. Be thankful. We have a, a f so much to be thankful for. So much. I love you. Sorry it took so long. But I do love you. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is just in case, and I'm just passing through.